Hello, hello. It is Thursday. Welcome to the CBSN Minnesota Morning Update. I'm Jason DeRussia. Glad to be hanging out with you this morning. Let's get you up to date on the weather. It's nice out there. Now, look, Riley and I were just talking about the weather forecast. On a day like today, you got two choices. One is, you know, log on to your computer and wait for your buddy Jason to tell you what the Twin Cities forecast is on the old CBSN Minnesota Morning Update. And I'll tell you, it's going to be about 50 degrees today about 11 degrees above average going to be mostly sunny won't be as windy as it was yesterday another option just go outside and look and then you'll know that's the weather what you see out there today that's the deal so there you go you got your i like to give you choices that's what i do i'm empowering you to embrace the day and i'd like to empower you to do this donate to your favorite charity if you can this has been a rough year right for the people who are uh, out of work or struggling uh, they need help. They've been going to our nonprofits, our food banks, our homeless shelters, uh, our job resource facilities. Uh, some of us looking for some mental health companionship have been adopting pets, adopting dogs from some of the many rescues around the state of Minnesota. Uh, today, Give to the Max Day. It's the biggest single day where people kind of marshal their energy and encourage their friends and themselves to donate to charity. So you can go to givemn.org to donate already. Uh, at this point this morning, more than $12 million has been donated. But we wanted you to give a chance to shout out your favorite charity or nonprofit. Who's doing something great that we should know about? Who should people donate to if they're looking for someone to donate to? Leave a comment in the WCCO uh, TV Facebook page and we'll share some of your favorite nonprofits right here. And if you don't do it today as part of Give the Max, make sure if you're in a position where you still have your job, you still have your income, some of that money maybe you saved on not going on vacation or going out to dinner or lunch as much or having to buy new clothes or makeup to come to work. Uh, see if you can maybe put that to a good cause today, a good day to focus on that. Some of the news updates today, of course, focusing on the new restrictions. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz announced them to help slow the spread of COVID-19. We are getting quite a bit of reaction about this stuff. Uh, the governor saying uh, the, the caseload in Minnesota has just been exploding too quickly. They had to make changes and fast. So starting Saturday, bars and restaurants are done. Takeout only. Takeout only. So no patio even. Any of those outdoor heaters? No. Takeout only. Gyms and fitness centers will be closed. And youth sports also put on hold. These restrictions are uh, in place for four weeks and then reevaluated. We'll see. Uh, how that goes. Bars and restaurants have only had in person dining for about five and a half months uh, since the pandemic started. Now they switch back to takeout. Wes Burdine, who owns Blackheart right by Allianz Field, said in the spring when there was a shutdown, he had to throw out 15 to 20 kegs. You know, you have these unfinished beer. This time he wants the okay to sell them in growlers. The state really hasn't done anything to help bars sell. Uh, cocktails or growlers. Burdine says he understands the need to stop the in-person service. He's not arguing about that, but he says the bills won't stop. It's tough. We're scraping by and, and we're really just uh, trying to survive. We have to look at a couple things and figure out how to get by until we get a bailout in the, the spring, which we all expect. Wes, I think, has expressed that he's frustrated, especially at Minnesota Republicans who have downplayed the risk of the virus and downplayed the need for masking and some of these other restrictions. He thinks that where we are now could have been avoided. Uh, gym owners, they are struggling too. Fitness centers closed for nearly three months in the spring. Skybox Gym in St. Louis Park, they've been doing these virtual workout classes to help them get through. And now they have to go back to that once again. A lot of gym owners pushing back here saying the data really doesn't show a huge amount of transmission from gyms. So we'll see what happens there. Um, you want to help restaurants? You're going to have some options, and I'm working to put them together for you. First, I've assembled a list of takeout Thanksgiving options. Some of these places selling out already. So you're going to want to get on it if you're uh, maybe not in the mood to cook a full turkey for your family gathering of four or five or six. Uh, order Thanksgiving takeout. These restaurants could use the business. A full list of restaurants all over the Twin Cities. You can see it's a big one. WCCO.com slash Thanksgiving. And in a couple weeks, I'll have my list of holiday gift card bonus deals for restaurants, too. The new rules do restrict several businesses. Part of the pushback that you're hearing is because some of the things that are still open. So stores, for example, 
are open at 100% capacity, so no change to retail. The state says we get that people are irritated if you have to close your gym and people can still go to Target, but there's no data showing transmission at the big box or the retail stores. Uh, salons and barbershops, same thing. They're not seeing any major transmission there and they're open at half capacity. Outdoor rack areas will be open, skating rinks, ski hills and parks. Um, their indoor areas will be closed. And the biggest thing, what I think, you know, obviously we're concerned about employees and businesses, but the biggest change for most people is the fact that they're saying no more social gatherings. So if you've been like visiting your sister and her family or your parents, uh, the state is saying uh, they're ordering you to not do that, to only gather with your immediate household. Wisconsin taking extra steps to stop the virus as well. Governor Tony Evers extending the Wisconsin mask mandate into mid-January. The current rule is supposed to expire on Saturday. Yesterday, Wisconsin reported nearly 8,000 new cases of the virus and another 52 deaths. Starting tonight, Minnesotans will be able to see the state fairgrounds transform for the holidays. This is the first time they've done this at the state fairgrounds. It's a big holiday festival. It's called the Glow Festival. You can see it's sort of a drive through experience. More than a million lights all throughout the fairgrounds. Pretty cool. Some striking displays. There's a 100 foot tree. You see, they got like igloos with like a, that was like a disco dance setup. Uh, you stay in your car the whole time. There's a selfie village at the end and some uh, state fair food as well. Pronto Pups uh, wasn't open when I got to check this out last night, much to the chagrin of my kids who were excited about getting a Pronto Pup. You do have to buy tickets online in advance. It'll be around uh, through early January. Uh, how about some golf? Today, I bet there are going to be plenty of people out playing around. Stonebrook Golf Course in Shakopee. There are no fools. They opened yesterday to celebrate the late fall warm-up. So many people interested. They opened with a shotgun start, so they took all the golfers, said, all right, you get a one, you get a two, you get a three, you get a four, and everybody tees off at once. The wind was pretty strong, but uh, who's complaining? The course is open uh, today and tomorrow. So if you want to get out there and golf, that's an option for you. Boy, this was a hot controversy and filed under the category of some of the, maybe one of the dumbest controversies we've seen uh, in the last several weeks, I would say. Uh, for the first time ever, the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving and Christmas specials were going to only be on Apple, the Apple streaming video, Apple TV. Uh, and people had a petition. They were like, no, bring it back to free TV. I don't want to pay for Apple TV. And Apple said, fine. PBS inked a deal to air them. I don't know if PBS paid for it or Apple was just like, please air it so people will shut up. Uh, these specials are great. Charlie Brown Thanksgiving airs on November 22nd. Charlie Brown Christmas on December 13th. No commercials in it. Uh, so enjoy, pay tribute to St. Paul's own Charles Schultz, the creator of Peanuts. All right, let's get back to today's talker. Give to the max. By the way, great job, Keyboard Warriors. You did it. You did it with your online petition. You spoke out and you made Apple put the Peanuts thing on PBS. Can't you get it? Can't you just, like, don't you guys have it on a VHS tape at your house? Just put that in. All right, favorite charities. Today's the day. Give to the max. Give to charity. Here we go. Leanne, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. She has two sons, Carson and Anders, with CF. Leanne, awesome. Thank you. Uh, hopefully people will give. Here's Missy suggesting the Lions United Fitness Center. All right, Missy, thank you. Uh, Meals on Wheels of Northwest Dakota County. That's cool. We love Meals on Wheels. They do great work, benefit the community so many ways. Good shout out there. Here's Kathy saying uh, she recommends the Joy Collab, uh, creating spaces for children with life limiting conditions. That's cool. I'm going to look that up. Joy Collab, because I don't know much about them. That's part of the fun of Give to the Max Day, right? You can look up these places. It's Joy Collaborative. Yeah, very cool. Uh, next one, we've got Rick Nelson, Anna Marie's Alliance and other domestic abuse shelters for women. Longtime volunteer there. They do great work. Rick, thank you. Lene says uh, the Wiggle Your Toes organization. Wiggle Your Toes is great. They help amputees uh, heal, recover, and flourish in their new normal. 
great recommendation there, Lene. And Dana shouts out one of my favorites. I'm a big supporter of Second Harvest Heartland. And as part of that, uh, they created the Minnesota Central Kitchen, where restaurants that have closed because of the pandemic repurpose some of their staff members to make restaurant uh, food and make meals for people in need. So think about that. You know, this year we had great racial unrest in the Twin Cities after the death of George Floyd. I would urge you as you give today to think about supporting uh, those nonprofits who are doing work in the black community, who are doing work in the indigenous community. Uh, and uh, let's remember, let's remember the spirit that took over these cities uh, as you give your money today. Uh, we appreciate anybody who donates to anything they're passionate about. It makes